Hey Summoners, how's it going? My name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for this video. In this one, we're covering the latest training builds for patch 12.15. We're covering a variety of builds and we'll also cover some for every role. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future videos and let's get started. First off, we'll start with the top lane. It wasn't too long ago that Kled was buffed as he received some extra damage on his Q and a reduced cooldown to his W. It's no surprise that his play rate has slightly increased since the changes. On top of that, his win rates have increased a respectable amount and our analysts anticipate this trend will continue moving forward. That being said, a rather unorthodox build has started to gain popularity, so let's talk about it. Before even jumping into the items, you want to run Ignite as you want to play aggressively and hold kill pressure over your opponent. For his runes, take Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Overgrowth, Demolish, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. While Conqueror is more popular, Lethal Temple can make remounting easier and provides a comparable amount of damage. For items, build Sunfire Aegis, Defensive Boots, Blade of the Ruined King, Death Stance, Maul of Namordius, and Guardian Angel. With Blade of the Ruined King, taking Lethal Temple provides a little more value. However, the biggest thing to note about this build is the use of Sunfire Aegis. The extra health, immolate damage, and tenacity bring a lot to the table, making Kled even harder to deal with. Our next top lane build is for Shivana. Gradually picking up popularity, she's a bruiser that brings solid amount of damage to the table. For her runes, take Press the Attack, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Overgrowth, Conditioning, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. Press the Attack is absurdly strong on her, as she's able to quickly activate it with the help of her Q. Her items are Frostfire Gauntlet, Defensive Boots, Blade of the Rune King, Demonic Embrace, Titanic Hydra, and Gargoyle Stone Plate. The slow from Frostfire allows Shivana to stick to her foes, maximizing not only her auto attack damage, but also the damage over time with her W. If you're trying to improve your laning, jungling, or team fighting, make sure to check out our website ProGuides.com, where you can contact one of our expert coaches. We have coaches who specialize in all champions and roles who have helped countless players rank up and hit their goals. That being said, let's continue on with the video. That covers the top lane build, so make sure to check up on the screen for a recap of those builds. Next up, let's run through the jungle. This patch is full of oddball picks, so we'll get things rolling with Jungle Taric. Oddly enough, he's a solid duelist who brings some powerful utility to the fight. He acts as a fighter, frontliner, and warder for his teammates, and is an especially potent counter ganker. For his runes, take Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Nimbus Cloak, Water Walking, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. His items are Defensive Boots, Trinity Force, Winter's Approach, Frozen Heart, Death's Dance, and either Spare Vistage or Gargoyle Stone Play as her last item, depending on the team's composition. With Trinity Force alone, Taric deals a solid amount of damage with his Q's low cooldown, which also activates his passive. Afterwards, you can opt into a tankier build to frontline for your team. Next up is Echo Jungle. However, this build is a Battle Mage or AP Bruiser type of build. For the runes, take Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Overgrowth, Second Wind, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and HP. Conqueror is important here because the item build that you'll be looking for is geared towards extended fights. His items with this build are Sunfire Aegis, Ionian Boost of Lucidity, Nashor's Tooth, Cosmic Drive, Zanya's Hourglass, and Anathema's Chains. You can play super aggressively with this build as you're trying to constantly stay on top of your enemies, dealing as much emulate damage and basic attack damage with the help of Nashor's Tooth. The extra tenacity makes Echo pretty difficult to peel, while Anathema's Chains makes it even harder for the main carry on the enemy team to effectively deal with the mobile but dangerous threat. That covers our jungle build, so we'll put a quick recap of them on the screen for you. Take a look, and next on the list is the mid lane. For the mid lane, we'll start with the Nasus build. No, it's not AP, but it's a pretty difficult one for a lot of mid laners to deal with, especially because there's a lot more durability in the game. Nasus is a ticking time bomb here, and as the game progresses, it's going to get harder and harder for his lane opponent to successfully poke him down. His runes are Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Second Wind, Overgrowth, Ability Haste, a defensive rune of choice, and HP. Lethal Tempo provides a massive increase in DPS for all ints. Since his E also shreds armor, he's able to deal massive damage whenever his opponents choose to fight him, or if they overextend and he's able to force a heavier trade. For items, build Boots of Lucidity, Divine Sunderer, Gargoyle Stone Plate, Frozen Heart, Anathema's Chains, and Force of Nature. Another champion worth noting in the mid lane is Varus. Rather than taking him in the bot lane, try him out as an AP carry in the mid lane. While it's taken quite some time, players have finally begun making use of the various AP buffs that he received over time. All it took was putting him in the mid lane and he's able to gradually poke away at his enemies, and also level up faster to make the most out of his abilities. For runes, take Hail of Blades, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Absolute Focus, Gathering Storm, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. You want to take Halo Blades for its trading power in lane, but also because it allows you to quickly stack up your W on enemies for some massive damage when you activate them with an ability. Ultimate Hunter significantly reduces the cooldown on his ultimate, allowing him to significantly shift the flow of teamfights way more often. His items are Nasher's Tooth, Sorcerer's Shoes, Rift Maker, Rabidon's Deathcap, Zanya's Hourglass, and Void Staff. Before wrapping up the mid lane, let me ask you a question of the day. 
Are you satisfied with the current state of the items? I personally think there's a lot of variety, but adding a few more unique items could continue to make the game way more interesting. It always feels like players are just trying to figure out what the best builds are, making adaptation or thoughtfulness less valuable. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let's continue on with the video. That covers the mid lane, so again we'll put up those builds on the screen for you. Next, let's run through the bottom lane. Once again, Lethality Jin is seeing plenty of play. However, there are a few things that have changed. First, it's becoming more and more popular to take exhaust on Jin. Having the ability to peel for yourself makes a huge difference, as in plenty of situations, Jin is going to be very far behind his team. Most notably, this will be when he's casting his W and his ultimate, meaning that either his support will have to not contribute to team fights and instead babysit him, or move further away from him, leaving him exposed. Exhaust takes a large burden off his team and allows him to safely contribute to more situations. For his runes, take Dark Harvest, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Presence of Mind, Coup de Grasse, Couple Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. For items, start with Terra of a Goddess. This will save you a decent chunk of gold off the rip, and will allow you to hit the Mirror Mana Power Spike even faster. Following up on the Terra Build Eclipse, Boots of Swiftness, Mana Immune, Sorella's Grudge, Edge of Night, and Guardian Angel. For our support build, let's talk about an obscure one with Silas. Silas support brings plenty of damage on the bottom lane, but more importantly, puts a ton of pressure on the enemy team. On one hand, it's a super unexpected pick. The enemy team's solo laners will often have to anticipate to fight him and will attempt to counterpick it. To add another layer to this, Silas as a champion forces the enemy team to think carefully about what champions they choose. A powerful ultimate is a great asset to a team, but when Silas is on the other team, it's an equally powerful tool for them as well. Maybe this is enough to convince you to give him a try, but let me provide you with the build first. For his runes, take Aftershock, Font of Life, Second Wind, Overgrowth, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Ability Haste, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Spell Thief's Edge, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Everfrost, Zanya's Hourglass, Cosmic Drive, and a Rabidon's Death Cap. Overall, it's a similar build to what you see him use in a solo lane, but with Spell Thief's Edge. Also, you'll throw it back by taking Aftershock for the extra durability. Since you won't have as much income, it's more likely that you'll get blown up, especially since you can potentially have to take the focus from two champions rather than one. That covers the bottom lane build, so we'll put them up on the screen once again for a final review. To wrap up this video, let's talk about a duo that players are currently abusing. For our combo, we have a jungle and mid duo with Poppy and Vagar. While it may sound odd, when working together, they present a ton of kill pressure against both the enemy mid laner as well as side laners. After Vagar casts his E, it sets up the potential for an insane amount of burst damage. In the right position, it's even possible for them to combo their stuns to quickly eliminate the unfortunate victim. Even if Vagar misses the stun, his enemies are trapped while Poppy is able to push them away from safety or even into the cage's edge to land a stun. For Poppy's runes, take Predator, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Triumph, Coup de Grasse, Double Adaptive Force, and Armor. Her items are Divine Sunder, Defensive Boots, Dead Man's Plate, Force of Nature, Frozen Heart, and Gargoyle Stone Plate. Vagar's runes are Predator, Taste of Blood, Ghost Poro, Ingenious Hunter, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. For items, build Everfrost, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff, Zanya's Hourglass, and Anathema's Chains. That covers the build, so we'll put those two up on the screen for you all. With all of that out of the way, we've concluded our Korean builds for patch 12.15. Hope you guys enjoyed the content, and like always, feel free to share any thoughts and feedback with us in the comments below. Also, expand the description if you'd like to join our Discord community, where you can be the first to hear about any future giveaways for prizes like free coaching. And you know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.